Uh, that was the only thing I was supposed to remember. Um, let me start from the story. Once upon, once upon a time, there was a Polish girl who was getting married. Now, she wanted everything to be perfect, including her wedding invitations. The only thing was that she couldn't really find the good ones, the one that she liked, so she decided to create it herself. This is actually the one that you see on the screen right now. Now, her friends, well, girlfriends, loved it so much that they asked her to do the same for them. And this was actually how the idea for the business was born. Now, six months later, she actually started a company called For Love Polka Dots, based in Poland. She started using Facebook as a marketing tool. And only in two years, she actually managed to grow it for the shipments to over 100 countries. Now, that wouldn't be possible 10 or 15 years ago. That wouldn't be possible without you know, $1 million budget, or we would actually define a success a bit differently versus actually having a company that its products are being shipped to over 100 countries. So what I want to talk today is the value of the mobile advertising. My name is Katarzyna Paliwoda. I was already introduced. I'm Polish by origin. And I actually, I'm actually a partner at Facebook for Center in Eastern Europe. So it's for 28 countries, including Serbia. Now, how I want to approach the content today are from two dimensions. The first one is whether you do the media right. So are you really, if you do advertising on any of our platforms, are you truly doing it right? And then whether you put the right content into it. So it'll be like a media and the creativity part. Does this make sense? Come on, I'm not answering my own questions. Awesome, and I'm fully aware that I'm the only thing that divides you from lunch. And you know, food is a very, very serious competition. <laughs> so hopefully, you'll try to enjoy it. So let me let me start from a bit of the background on, you know, why we will talk mobile advertising right now. So how we define that, you know, these days at Facebook, the so-called fourth industrial revolution. Quantum, comp quantum computing, 3D printing, artificial intelligence, that's all what it's all about. Now, we are fully aware that we generate so much data all around us. You know, as a human beings, we actually generated 5 billion of gigabytes till 2003. And right now, we do it every 10 minutes. Okay, this is why, this is the reason why actually the humans, why human's attention itself is becoming the scarcest resource. Okay, this is why people cannot really focus because there's so much data around us. And you know, even once you listen to the, you know, once you're here today, you have your phone, you probably have your laptop somewhere where you have a friend talking on your right, and there's so much data points that are shared, even during the, the very first, the very uh, conference. The second thing is all about, sorry, the second thing is all about how successful you can be, depending on where you come from, or depending how big is your budget. So, you know, traditionally speaking, there, there always used to be like this billion, multi-billion dollars companies, like A and B's on the chart, that had that billions dollars budgets and could do whatever. Now, what happened with the fourth industrial revolution, that there might be the X, Y, and Z's appearing, and somehow equally effectively compete with the big billion dollars players. Now, that wouldn't be possible 10 years ago. That actually wouldn't be possible without like, you know, Google, I don't, you're somewhere here, <laughs> or Facebook, okay? Now, there's a one story that is actually super close to my heart, and this is one dollar shave club. Have you heard about that company ever? Okay, at least half of you. So, just for, you know, for, for the sake of uh, the ones who hasn't, one dollar shave club was actually a startup that launched in state six years ago. Only in the first two years of its existence, it actually taken 10% value share from Gillette on their biggest market. And on, only five years later, that was actually bought by Unilever for $1 billion. Now, the reason why I'm telling this story, there are two reasons why I tell this story. The first one is it's super close to my heart because for the last two years before joining Facebook, I was actually managing Gillette for both EMEA and Central Europe. And trust me, I've been presenting it in a very tiny little granular way 100 times in my life. And the reason why I'm sharing it today again is simply because 
a startup could challenge PNG on their biggest market. Okay? Now, they haven't started with a huge funding. The funding followed only once they gained the shares first. So even if you, even if you believe you are small, maybe, or even if you believe you, in, you, know, you are not well off to challenge the biggest competitor out there, ask yourself the next time, are you bold enough? Because at the end of the day, what technology brings is that ability to challenge everyone. And then the third part of the story about fourth industrial revolution are obviously the mobile phones. Now, I don't want it to be American, you know, 100 slides about nothing presentation, which means that I will not show you 100 data proving that mobile is important. important. You know it. And I was actually talked today already. Now, there's just one point I would love to call out, and this is this one. So, as you know, Facebook's a mobile company. Now, the, the, every single country we've measured, what we discovered is that actually there's at least, you know, the lowest number we've got was three and a half hours spent on mobile on the daily basis. Now, I'm sharing it also from the other perspective, and this is the following. Now, I unfortunately cannot share the server-specific data. You know, we are a Wall Street company, and I truly apologize for that. I've tried hard with the PR. <laughs> but still, I want to share it from the other perspective. Facebook as a company didn't have a mobile strategy seven years ago. Facebook as a company didn't have any mobile strategy seven years ago. We actually predicted that mobile will not be big. Okay? Facebook Inc. predicted that mobile will not be big. And you know where we've woken up? That was the moment we've entered Wall Street. We've entered Wall Street and all of a sudden, you know, all the analytics came back saying, guys, you'll be gone in five years. You are not on mobile. You know, your mobile app sucks. I'm not sure if any of you have been using Facebook app seven or eight years ago, but that sucked that time. Okay? Now, that time, tech, Mark, sorry, Mark made a cautious decision saying, since now, whatever we do is mobile first. That's why we're not developing or expanding any of our desktop versions. And that's why whatever we approve, whatever goes out, is actually mobile focused and only mobile. Okay? So if Facebook could be so wrong, but still made that bold move of completely changing strategy towards mobile and overall digital, well, we are digital companies, that's why you have to do it to mobile, then you can do it as well. Now, I've promised to share these two perspectives, media and the content ones, so let me start right now. Now, when it comes to the media and when it comes to the digital overall, what digital brought to us is loads of data. Yeah? I remember when I was starting my career like 13 years ago, we had this huge Excel files. <laughs> it wasn't even Google Analytics first, but it was like a huge Excel files with like how many impressions we've got and all that shit that is not really important. We couldn't really, you know, we were wrong for by like five million here and there because we couldn't really figure it out. We couldn't really figure it out. Now, if you have, if you have to, if you want to assess whether it works or not, you have to look at the true numbers and the ones that actually tell you something. So the phil philosophy here is the following: cookies are great, but still they are not enough. Okay? How many of you has more than one device connected to the internet? Okay, two, three, four, four, five. Yeah, I will stop here. Okay? So obviously, you know, cookies is simply the econometrics based on how many people you are in reality. Now, whenever you have to log in, so whenever you have to sign in as a, as a you know, and you share your identity, you're a true, per you're a true people. So that's a true reach versus the cookies only. It's the same for the clicks. You know, do you really want to buy clicks? Do you really want to buy the website visits if you are not, you know, I don't know, entertainment or media industry? Or are you actually uh, interested in sharing your message effectively? In the same way, it goes down to the cost. Do you really care about how much you pay? Or do you care about how much you earn based on the advertising? Okay, so what are the true ROI rather than the CPMs and the cost itself? Now, we, you know, I, I don't want to sound cliche, but obviously when it comes to Facebook, you know, Facebook delivers the on-target impressions very effectively, very effectively versus any other media. And that obviously includes the digital buckets. 
But I actually what I want to talk about is what we believe people are doing 90% wrong. And these are these little cute guys. They're cute, aren't they? Okay, now we've been selling likes, fans, followers, and all that stuff for the first seven years of our existence as a company. And you know what? We've been trying to prove it's working. And you know what we figure out? It doesn't. Okay? The engagement itself has no correlation to the offline sales. Okay? Clicking has no correlation to the offline sales. So, and I'm not saying, I will not leave you here, I'll share some more data. So first of all, we actually did a, over 200 researches with Nielsen across the globe, again comparing the CTR to the offline sales. And you know what? The correlation was close to zero. So we figure out that actually there's no correlation of someone liking something, commenting and sharing versus buying. We actually see something a bit opposite, which is like liking, commenting and so on is a part of your personal branding. So you would rather comment on something you cannot afford. So you'd rather go to next to the Chanel or iPhone if you cannot have it, rather than the stuff you truly use and buy. And the reason for that is simply because 90% of the people who've ever bought your product offline have never ever clicked on anything. What it means is that the clicking itself is a behavior. Okay, clicking is a behavior, which means that only 10% of you are actually clickers. 10%. So let's say these are the first two rows. You guys hate, comment, share, do all that shit that's kind of you know, related to the digital overall. Now, there are just few of them. The rest of you is still on Facebook and Instagram. You still consume media, okay? You still look at it, you still remember it. You just don't have that behavior of clicking, liking, or doing whatsoever. Now, the creative agency sometimes thinks, okay, but, okay, maybe it has no correlation to sales, but people remember yet more if they click on it. Would you think about that one as well? Well, the truth is, it's not. And we had a look on it also from that perspective. So if you think about brand awareness, ad recall, purchasing things, all the standard things that we're tracking as marketeers, it turns out that across all three, again, the correlation between CTR and the lift is low, lower than 1%. Okay? Now, what does it mean for anything related to Facebook? Or what does it mean for anything related to any of the Facebook products? Is that if you target the people who are clickers, so these first two rows, now there's this common rule about advertising is that if you go more narrowly, you'll pay more. And you not only buy something that is ineffective, you actually also pay more for it. So it doesn't make any sense. Now, who of you represents the client side? So who doesn't work in the agency? Well, I'm kind of... <laughs> okay, so like 30% of the audience. So for your sake, just remember, whenever you brief the agency, so whenever you brief your partners, you have to be clear what are the KPIs you set them. You have to be clear whether you care about awareness, consideration, intent, and all that stuff. And similarly to normal marketing, if you start from the awareness, it's broader reach, lower frequency, and then the opposite, the, matter, the point you go down, down, more down to the, more down, sorry, to the funnel, through the funnel. Now, what it also means is that whenever you do anything on Facebook, it's actually objectives-based buying. Which means that your agency partners will choose the objective the client is interested in. And if you care about awareness, if you care about basic build, uh, brand building, you should actually choose the awareness, is it, does it work? Yeah, <laughs> you know, the awareness, or at least get the views, and so on, rather than anything else. Buying boosting your post, or hopefully not, promoting your page is not something that will bring you business. Now, there's, all, there's your usual questions like, why is it still there if it doesn't work? Well, people buy it. <laughs> as simple as that. <laughs> people buy it. We discourage them to do so, but there, still there are a lot of presidents and there are a lot of vice presidents of a very different companies who care about how many fans do they have for a Facebook page. Okay? So from that perspective, yes, you can still buy it. I just say, on the behalf of Facebook, it doesn't make any sense. Now, let me now move to the creativity part. So, when it comes to creativity, 
it's equally important how you buy versus what you put there. You know, that sounds trivial, especially as you know, as a media industry, we tend to forget that the picture part of the creative, not only you know the GRPs, reach, and all that you know media figures, is equally important, even if not more sometimes. What does it mean is that you know we don't have a you know we don't have like a recipe for the creativity itself. Where's none? Okay, the the rules are there to break them. But still, if you think about the mobile phone, and if you think about 90% of your impressions or anything you do on Facebook is actually displayed on the mobile phone, that's a bit different from the technical specification versus whatever we used to be doing as an industry for the over, what, 100 years ago? 100 years. What does it mean is that people consume mobile far faster versus anything else, versus any other medium. You actually consume and scroll faster on mobile versus anywhere else. Now, the good news is that human brains requires only 13 milliseconds to recognize a picture. Which actually means is that if you have to choose between the picture itself and buying a stock photo or doing it yourself via phone, you rather focus on that picture rather than focus on what you're writing there. Now, let's make a test. I'll show you the picture for 13 milliseconds. What have you seen? Yeah. You could easily, what was the rooftop color? Yeah. What was in the background? Yeah. You pretty much got it. Now, I'm not saying that this is advertising, that's far from advertising, but still, human brain processes images 60,000 times faster versus words. Now, if you think about it, there's one more dimension, and this is the speed of scrolling. So I've already said, and I've already mentioned today, Attention is becoming a big thing. People don't, people do all screen, you know it. You know, people do all screen. People don't get focused. And then, at the end of the day, you will be bored at some part, at some point of this presentation. Because, you know, you cannot really focus for as long as 25 minutes. This is the reality. Now, what it also, what it also means is that we've discovered that the brand awareness itself and recall of the message is based on your individual <coughs> speed of scrolling. Which means that me, personally, I have some speed of scrolling that's obviously very different versus every single of you. I will stop on puppies, because I love puppies. <laughs> I will stop on the restaurant reviews. I will not stop for, I don't know, like cooking commercials. I don't cook, actually. Now, there's this one thing that, has in, that people has in common, and this is their age. So actually, the younger the people, the faster they scroll. Okay? That also means that you know, they actually have more data around us, uh, surrounding them, and that's why they also scroll faster. Now, the question I usually get here is, if I will get older, will I start scrolling slower? No. <laughs> okay? So this will get more and more complicated the attention itself will be more and more tricky. So the question is, what should we do? What should we do as a creative industry? What should we do as a marketeers? So again, we haven't found a solution, but we have a five considerations for you to remember whenever you design anything for these, for these devices. Yeah, that's, sorry, I've forgotten about this one, but this is pretty much the average with, for how many seconds people spend on the desktop versus mobile, just up to the point, on one post, Assuming it's not your ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend picture, obviously. I got that joke. <laughs> uh, but this is like the average. This is not advertising. This is pretty much the average. Now, the question is, again, if people consume uh, mobile media faster, how to do and how to catch their attention effectively? And this is, this is the following. I also forgot about that slide. Fuck. So, <laughs> yeah, the good news. So, you know, I was, I was so much into, into bad, bad news and how it's complicated. There's one good news, and this is the attention. So actually, attention itself on the mobile devices, it's higher versus any other medium. And we know it intuitively, because whenever we stare on our phones, it's really hard to do anything else in the way. Yeah? You've probably seen all that movies that people want, you know, go into the phone time or collapse or doing whatever, staring at their phones, because we haven't noticed things happening around them. So again, now hopefully there will be the slide that I was hoping for. What should we do? So it starts from the video. Whatever moves catches the attention more quickly. 
And we as a marketeers have been living in the era of video for uh, what, over 100 years or so? And we're still there. It just the definition of the video has to change. It's no longer 30 seconds TV spot, or not only. Okay? It's actually everything that moves. It's deep. You now it's, it's any kind of picture that you can actually make movable. If you think about these ones, these were just static posters. And we just added like an iPhone app um, um, effect on this one. You can do it using that device. It's the creativity that matters, and that's why creative agencies are so bloody important these days, rather than a $100,000 production budget. And trust me, I know what I'm saying, because I'm going here, I work with like a biggest Polish charity, their graphic designer is a 17 years old girl, and they can do that with their phones, with no budget, and so on. This is the idea that matters, and that's why idea is like the one that you should actually pay for the most. So again, whenever you can, make your picture movable. That's one. The second thing is about the format. So we somehow assume that even, even if we hold our phones this way, we actually flip it every time we watch the video. And it doesn't happen. 94% of the cases, people don't do it. Now, they don't, they don't do it for their friends' videos, they will not do it for your advertising. Which means that if you will use the standard 69 format, your ad will be simply smaller. And hopefully I don't need to convince you that at least when it comes to advertising, the bigger format is the bar. So if you just square it, so if you just cut it to one to one, or if you make it full vertical video, this will actually take the full screen of the most personal device people have. Now the third element is about the sound. So because you're in the conference, because you're at work, because children are at school, 90% sorry, 50% of the cases, the, the sound on the device will be turned off. Which means that approximately 50% of your advertising and your posts and your videos will be watched without the sound. It's not perfect, I know, but this is the reality. What we've discovered is just, you have to simply make it available and have it understandable without the sound as well. And by the way, adding something so quickly, so easy as a text overlays or subtitles, sorry, I'll play it one more time, helps. It actually pro prolongs the average viewership by approximately 15%. So again, if you want to tell your story visually, just also write something about it. Now the fourth principle is about surprise, about surprises, we love surprises. So whenever you, have, you want to catch the attention, whatever you can do that is non-standard, is awesome. Now imagine having this post on your phone, because even if I put it on the, you know, in the phone, in the, in the phone frame, it still, it still doesn't look good enough. Imagine that burger going to you from that device. Mm -hmm. That would be powerful, wouldn't it? And then again, you have to tell your story visually, and you have to tell it as fast as possible, which means that you can actually easily start from the end. You can just show the oh, wow effect, even tight. And you know, PNG tight, famous for a great advertising. Huh? That was a joke. Anyway, <laughs> can do it. <laughs> can do it. You know, tight is the most boring advertising on earth. But still, they've tried, and it's not creative whatsoever. But with this campaign, instead, they actually tried to make it a bit different. So again, not showing, you know, that traditional washing machine, blah blah, white <laughs> with the celebrity, but actually doing it a bit differently. And the last but not least is about the length. Okay, this is the fifth principle. Now, the question we're getting is, okay, if there are just three or four or five seconds people standing on the phones and on the single post, should they have the advertising three seconds long? And actually, not necessarily. What is it all about? Is to catch the attention and sell the message as quickly as it can be and as long as it has to be. But then don't drop the attention. Continue with it. We call it heartbeat. Which means that even if you catch people's attention at first, but then you'll just get boring, they will drop. But what we've noticed is that whatever is shot, whatever is produced in a way that keeps the attention going, this is working. By the way, that video is eight or nine minutes long, and it in average was watched for about one minute, which is them long for mobile devices. Now, if you ever ask yourself whether creativity works, and hopefully you don't, <laughs> But if you ever think about how important actually the creative work is, 
this is my favorite case. And it's my favorite case because it's actually a Polish case created for a German market. There's a Polish cat, you know, so it's like a national, national product. <laughs> There's a cat food advertising. And look at the numbers. It actually increased the top of mind awareness by 60%. One single campaign on Facebook. Now, that costed approximately $7,000 to produce with a super expensive creative agency. And actually the most tricky part of it was to find a cat who is doing it nicely. <laughs> so apparently the cat, cast, cat, 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 casting, cat, cat casting was the longest one when it comes to the production. Now, that wasn't their only creative, so that was what they used next. So all together for the campaign, they actually used four creatives, but bloody good ones. The ones that are actually breaking through the culture that people remember. So again, creativity works. And only combining the media and the creativity together, you can actually be effective in selling your message. Now, you probably ask, you know, like, you might get bored already, and I know it's pretty hot here, and there's a food waiting. So if there will be just one thing to remember from the creative part, and by the way, trust me, I hate quotes, and that's the only one I ever use on any presentation, is that execution is the only strategy that people see. Which means, next time, you present to the client, or next time you have to approve something on the client side that goes for Facebook or Instagram or whatever on mobile, do it on mobile. Okay? Let's not repeat the same mistakes we've done with outdoor when we're approving the outdoor on the desktop, you know, 20 centimeters from the screen, while the real, real life outdoor was just behind the tree 50 or 100 meters from us. That's the same principle. Approve it and have a look at it on mobile. Okay? I've shared with you just five creative considerations, but still, it's easy enough to get it yourself once you will just see it on the device that this will be uh, appeared later on. Does this make sense? Okay, now I have a couple of minutes back uh, left. So let me. One, two. That's a couple. That's, you know, two minutes are actually a couple of minutes. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm fully aware of the food waiting. So, the question is what's next? And the question is what we are working on and so on. And the long story short, because I don't have time, is the following. Out of 10 most downloaded apps worldwide last year, six of them were actually messaging apps. So messaging itself is a trend. We message differently and we communicate differently. The Oxford English Dictionary is choosing the word of the year. And in 2015, that word was actually an emoticon the one that is the most used. So that's why our communication changed, and that's why all the GIFs and stickers are so much popular. Now, no, it doesn't make sense to do the branded stickers. That's my favorite question. <laughs> but what also pop up, and what you've probably heard about, are all the bots and all the ways how you can leverage the messengers and the messaging apps for your business. Now, just to answer, you know, I'm, Let's put it this way. Ask yourself three times before you do it. So whenever it will cross your mind to use Messenger or whatever any messaging app out there for any kind of communication, ask whether people, consumers, have a true need behind it. Now, the reason why I'm saying it is simply because we don't want to follow the same mistake with it with, with, with the mobile apps. Who had ever, ever had an idea of developing a mobile app? Come on, for a brand, I'm sure. I'm sure that you know, there are more people. <laughs> but still, the idea is that we don't want to generate a, you know, a mobile app, we don't want to generate a bot or any kind of messenger application that follows the same trap. So there are 100 brands, so there's a tight app about you know, how to remove the stain from whatever. Or there's a Nestive app about you know, how to throw a ball and all that stuff that, doesn't really, that uh, no one really needs. Okay? Now, where is it useful, and this is a KLM example, is that KLM, KLM's, KLM's average, I know, <laughs> KLM's average consumer or whatever, the, um, the passenger flies KLM only twice a year, which means that we'll never ever download the app because you don't, don't, you don't really need the app if you fly twice a year. Which means that whenever you buy a ticket, you can actually you can actually mark whether you want to, be to you want it to be contacted via the messenger, and then you will get a pop-up message saying check-in is open, you can check in, and all that stuff that usually uh, you know you need to fly to fly a plane. 
This is a real consumer need. This is the one that you would probably use intuitively in any kind of service provider. Now, another case that I've promised to mention, because Ray thought it's interesting, <laughs> is the Durex one. So if you think about Durex creating a messenger bot, what could that be about? <laughs> it's not sex chats. So <laughs> what Durex did is that they discovered the inside that teenagers in states are obviously very afraid of asking sex questions to anyone, even on the phone, even if it's anonymous. That's why they actually created a bot that with it, within artificial intelligence is actually answering her questions. Okay? So that's, you know, that's another extreme versus KLM and how you could do it. Again, think it over and don't do it for the sake of doing it. Do it only once the people has a true need. Now, that was 25 minutes deck. So sorry, but I couldn't really talk about everything. Couple of important and useful resources. Yeah, that's a couple of important useful resources. First of all, you've probably heard about Blueprints, so the e-learning from Facebook. This is actually where you can find from five minutes to whatever five hours courses <laughs> on whatever you need, divided by the topic. But from the less obvious stuff, and I'm not sure if you've heard about this one, is first of all, we publish all the researches on Facebook IQ. So if you would like to read more about li why likes doesn't sell and, all, and so on, you can simply enter Facebook IQ. The second, second one is about Creative Hub. So we have a Creative Hub where we actually share the best cases from the mobile creativity, all the formats and everything you need when it comes to preparing the creatives in the most efficient way. And the last but not least, there are actually 22 of us working for 28 markets at Facebook as employees, which means, yes, that's a bad luck, but we cannot really be everywhere. Still, what we do for that region is that we actually do a group, a Facebook group, it's called Facebook for CE, where we post all the news related to the CE region. Which means that if you have any question, or if you are just wondering whether the latest rumor about Facebook or Instagram is right, feel free to join that group. This is where we physically, as a human beings, post stuff that are the most updated. Thank you so much. Fala. Yeah.